What's up, peers, and welcome back to the reading of the BISC Decentralized Exchange White Paper, Phase Zero, A Plan for Bootstrapping the BISC DAO. Continuing with Part 1, Understanding BISC and the BISC DAO. What BISC is? BISC is a decentralized Bitcoin exchange, best understood in terms of its major component parts. 1. BISC is a cross-platform desktop application that allows anyone to buy and sell Bitcoin in exchange for national currencies and other cryptocurrencies. BISC is a trading protocol that enables individuals to exchange directly with one another over the internet, eliminating the need for trusted third-party exchange services. BISC is a peer-to-peer -peer network formed by BISC applications discovering, connecting to, and working with one another to implement the BISC trading protocol. The BISC network is fully peer-to-peer -peer in that it requires no centrally controlled server and has no single point of failure. BISC is not a company. BISC is free software released under version 3 of the GNU Afero General Public License. BISC is built by individuals around the world who choose to work together. And BISC is used by individuals around the world who choose to trade with BISC over many other exchange alternatives. Why BISC exists? BISC's mission is to provide a secure, private, and censorship-resistant way of exchanging Bitcoin for national currencies and other cryptocurrencies over the Internet. When we say secure, we are referring to the safety of users' funds. Today, most Bitcoin exchanges are centralized, requiring users to store their Bitcoin for at least some amount of time on exchange servers. When thousands of users do this, it creates extreme incentives for those servers to be hacked and for those users' Bitcoin to be stolen. And time and time again, these hacks and thefts are exactly what happen. When we say private, we are referring to the user's ability to control access to their own information. Today, most centralized exchanges require users to divulge personal identifying information in order to set up an account and then in turn links users' trading activity to their respective identities. This practice creates extreme risk for users and their personal details and financial information will be stolen, leaked, or otherwise used against their own best interests. When we say censorship resistant, we are referring to users' ability to voluntarily trade with one another without interference from a third party. Today, centralized Bitcoin exchanges are highly susceptible to such interference. By their nature, they must operate within one legal jurisdiction or another, putting them at risk of being fined or shut down if they do not comply with the laws or other rules of that jurisdiction, which may include restrictions on who can trade and what can be traded, and almost always include requirements to collect personal information as described above. What's needed is an exchange where users keep control of funds that is private by default and that defends freedom of transaction. We built BISC to meet these needs. Where Bitcoin's motto is, be your own bank, 
Bisks is be your own exchange. How BISC works? In a nutshell, imagine you want to buy Bitcoin in exchange for US dollars. In BISC terminology, you are a buyer of Bitcoin looking for a seller of Bitcoin who will accept US dollar as payment. To complete such a trade using BISC, you would follow a series of steps similar to these. One, you will download and run the BISC application on your laptop or desktop computer. Two, you'll configure BISC with your US dollar payment method details. Three, you browse BISC's offer book for existing offers to sell Bitcoin for US dollars. Four, you take an existing offer agreeing to buy the seller's Bitcoin for your US dollar. Five, you send US dollar from your bank to the seller's bank and indicate you have done so in BISC. Six, you and the seller wait for your US dollar payment to arrive at the seller's bank. Seven, the seller receives your US dollar and indicates they have done so in BISC. Eight, you receive the seller's Bitcoin and the trade is complete. These steps can vary in a number of ways depending on whether you wish to buy or sell Bitcoin or whether you are the maker or the taker of an offer, which payment methods you have access to and so on. But in any case, the steps above are rather different than those one would follow to complete a similar trade on a centralized exchange. How trading with BISC is different. Beyond the obvious difference that BISC is a desktop application and not a browser-based web application, the first difference experience traders will notice is that there is no automatic order matching on the BISC exchange. Rather, BISC users manually search for and select specific offers they wish to take. This approach enables truly peer-to-peer -peer trade settlements and ensure that users are in control of which counterparties they trade with. BISC is also unique among decentralized Bitcoin exchanges in the way it coordinates out-of-band fiat payments. BISC does not directly integrate with banks or other national currency payment systems in any way. Rather, BISC's trading protocol orchestrates the process of buyers and sellers working together and settling fiat payments outside of the BISC application, as demonstrated in steps 5 to 7 of the trading example above. These and other differences result in a key trade-off for BISC users, one in which trade settlement takes longer, but trading itself is far more secure, private, and censorship resistant. How BISC keeps funds secure? BISC is entirely non-custodial. Users stay in control of fiat and cryptocurrency funds. Trades include security deposits from buyer and seller to prevent fraud. Trading funds and security deposits are locked in a two out of three multi-signature escrow. Disputes are handled through a decentralized human arbitration process. How BISC keeps data private. Using BISC requires no registration or centralized identity verification Every BISC application is a Tor hidden service. BISC has no central server or database to record data. And data is encrypted such that trade details are readable only 
by counterparties. How BISC resists censorship. BISC's network is fully distributed peer-to-peer -peer network and thus difficult to shut down. BISC's network is built on top of Tor and thus inherits Tor's own censorship resistance. BISC is code, not a company. It is not incorporated and it cannot be disincorporated. BISC's current status. Track record. After two years of development and testing, BISC went into operation on April 9, 2016, 18 months ago, at the time of writing, October 17. And since then, the network has processed 5,200 trades, worth of a total 4.1 million US dollar, without downtime or major incident. Growth rate. BISC is still small, but has been growing steadily. The US dollar volume of BISC exchanges throughout the network has doubled roughly every three and a half months since the project went live. From 356,000 US dollars in April 2016 to 435,000 US dollars in September 2017. This growth has been organic with minimal marketing. Funding. BISC is designed to be funded directly by its users through trading fees. Trading fees are paid by both buyers and sellers on every trade and they are received by each trade's arbitrator in compensation for the service they provide. As of October 2017, these trading fees total around one Bitcoin per month, distributed to two arbitrators who are also the project's founders and principal developers. These funds are insufficient to cover expenses and as a result of the project remains funded in part by founding's founder savings. Fortunately, as mentioned above, BISC trading volumes are growing and total monthly trading fees are growing along with, the t with them. As such, it is re reasonable to expect that trading fees will soon be sufficient to cover expenses and even to compensate additional non-arbitrator contributors. But as these additional funds come in, a new problem arises with them. As mentioned above, BISC's trading fees currently compensate arbitrators in a direct, automatic, and decentralized way. But the current approach is limited in that it only compensates arbitrators. What's needed is a mechanism that can compensate all kinds of contributors in an equally decentralized fashion. Governance. BISC's technology is fully decentralized, but its governance is not. Today, the BISC's project consists of a small team of active contributors where most maintenance operation and administration duties are carried out by project founders and where those founders make virtually all major decisions. While this approach has worked well enough to bring the project to its current state, it is no longer sustainable if BISC is to continue to grow. First, because it does not scale. Project founders have become bottlenecks, incapable of addressing all users' needs. Second, because it introduces censorship risk to have responsibility centralized in a small group of people. What's needed is a way to decentralize responsibility and high trust duties away from project founders and into the hands of other component and reputable contributors. Summary. What BISC needs to do. As mentioned above, 
BISC's mission is to provide secure, private, and censorship-resistant way to exchange Bitcoin for national currencies and other cryptocurrencies over the internet. Today, BISC is delivering on the first two aspects of the mission. Indeed, we believe Bitcoin is among the most secure and private exchange options currently available. Where BISC falls short on this mission is the third aspect of censorship resistant. BISC's peer-to-peer architecture, use of Tor as a transport layer, and other built-in projects protections give the project a significant degree of technical censorship resistant. But with regards to funding and governance, the BISC project remains vulnerable so long as these two critical factors remain centralized. To fully realize its mission, what BISC needs now are four things. One, containing a continued trading volume growth to increase capacity to compensate contribu contributions. Two, more contributors and contributions to improve BISC and foster that volume growth. Three, a decentralized funding model to feasibly incentivize those, contribu those contributors. Four, a decentralized governance model to avoid censorship and other centralization risks. In the next set section, we'll see how the BISC DAO BSQ token have been designed to address this need. The BISC DAO and BSQ token. The BSQ token. We introduce a token BSQ designed to facilitate a transfer of value from the traders using BISC to the contributors maintaining it. BSQ is BISC's own custom implementation of a colored coin concept. Using 2.5 of the 25 million Bitcoin there have, that have been donated to the project since its inception in March 2014, we created 2.5 million BSQ tokens, such that each BSQ token is represented on the Bitcoin blockchain by 100 Satoshis. This chart shows supporters have donated Bitcoin and these are transferred via the colored coin process into the BSQ token and then distributed on merit of contribution to past contributors. We distributed these 2.5 million BSQ to 144 opt-in past contributors to the BISC project as a way of rewarding these individuals for their efforts over the past years. Stake is distributed according to the relative value each contributor has added to the project over time, as well as will be described further below. BSQ tokens are used to vote on and make decisions about the BISC DAO itself. And by initially distributing BSQ to past contributors, we intentionally establish the BISC DAO as a meritocracy in which those who have, been, who have contributed the most value to the project in the past are those who have the most say over its future. Why is BSQ needed? Today, without BSQ, traders use BISC and pay BISC trading fees in Bitcoin. At the same time, contributors work to improve BISC and in turn make BISC more useful to traders. This ultimately ca causes more traders to use BISC more often and a cycle of growth perpetuates. There is a limit, however, on how much growth can occur because while trading fees paid in Bitcoin automatically compensate arbitrators, 
other contributors are currently not compensated at all. Figure 3 shows the limitations of BISC's current funding model. BISC's current funding model has worked well enough so far, mainly because the BISC team has been so small. BISC's founders have played most key roles in the system, including that of arbitrators, such that compensating arbitrators with trading fees has, in practice, meant compensating the project's primary contributors as well. The problem is that this approach breaks down quickly as more contributors get involved. And as explained above, it is critical to, that, to the success of the project to grow the number of contributors and to distribute responsibility amongst them. What's needed is a decentralized way to transfer value from traders using BISC to contributors maintaining it. And there is no practical way to achieve this with Bitcoin alone. Accumulating and distributing trading fees using multi-signature addresses and transactions could, in theory, provide part of the solution. But in practice, these tools are still too primitive to achieve a fully decentralized and meritocratic approach required to successfully operate the BISC DAO. Furthermore, for a system of compensation to be fully decentralized and meritocratic, an equally decentralized and meritocratic system of governance is required in order to decide which contributions should be compensated and which should not. And this, too, is not practical to implement with Bitcoin alone. It is for these reasons that BSQ is needed. As we'll see in the section that follows, the BSQ token has been designed to overcome the challenges described above and to provide a fully decentralized and meritocratic funding of governance model for BISC. How BSQ is used. The BSQ token has five uses also known as utilities or functions within the BISC DAO. Figure 4 shows the uses of the BISC BSQ token within the BISC DAO. 1. Trading. Using BISC exchange, A. Stakeholders sell BSQ to B. Traders who buy it. 2. Spending. Traders spend BSQ on trading fees at a discounted rate versus Bitcoin. 3. Earning. Contributors A submit compensation requests for their work and when approved by voting, and B earn the, the requested amount of BSQ. 4. Voting. Stakeholders vote with their BSQ to approve compensation requests. 5. Bonding. Contributors A. Post BSQ bonds to take on high trust roles, for example arbitration, and B. Earn BISC or BSQ interests on those bonds over time. Together, these interlocking functions of the BSQ token are designed to create, regulate, and perpetuate an internal economy for the BISC network. We call this economy the BISC DAO. How BSQ is issued and destroyed. When traders spend BSQ on trading fees, they are in fact destroying those BSQ. The spent tokens are not paid to or otherwise received by in, in any individual contributor or group of contributors. Rather, they are burned or made to be unspendable by being decolored. In this way, spending BSQ on trading fees decreases the total supply of BSQ. Likewise, when contributors submit compensation requests for BSQ, 
they are in fact requesting the right to issue or create those BSQ. Each compensation request res revolves around a Bitcoin transaction in the amount of Satoshis required to represent the requested amount of BSQ. And when that compensation request is approved by voting, those Satoshis are colored such that the BSQ network validates them as spendable BSQ. In this way, earning BSQ through compensation requests increases the total supply of BSQ. Figure 5 shows how BSQ is issued and destroyed. How BSQ decentralizes compensation and enables monetary policy. We have seen above, BSQ is destroyed when traders spend it and created when contributors earn it. A key benefit of this approach is that spend BSQ need not, indeed cannot, be stored, protected, or later distributed by any individual or group. By eliminating the need to hold and later distribute BSQ, we also eliminate a set of difficult problems and risks, including determining who should maintain control over these funds and how they should be protected and dispersed. Overall, this approach makes it possible to transfer value from tra traders to contributors in a decentralized way. The transfer happens indirectly through the process of destruction and creation, but this indirection is precisely what makes it decentralized. The creation side of the transfer is intermediated by voting on compensation requests. But this, not, but this is not a problem given that voting itself is decentralized and meritocratic process. An important property of this approach is that BSQ creation and destruction need not necessarily occur at the same rate. For example, in any given month, there may be the case that more BSQ are spent by traders than are earned by contributors. In this case, the net supply of BSQ would decrease during that month. Likewise, given a month in which fewer BSQ are spent by traders than are earned by contributors, the, next, the net supply of BSQ would increase. What emerges is a form of monetary policy for the BISC DAO in which, one, traders control how much BSQ is destroyed through spending, contributors control the upper bound on BSQ creation through compensation request, and three, stakeholders control how much BSQ is actually created through voting. Of these three roles, the third is the most important from a policy perspective, as it allows stakeholder a direct means of controlling inflation, that is the growth in the supply of BSQ. It may be prudent, especially in the early days of the BISC DAO, to operate at a certain rate of inflation in order to fund the development of features that will later result in an increased trading volume, that is, in growth, that demand for BSQ. In the long run, however, we believe the ideal steady state of the BISC DAO will be one in which the amount of BSQ earned in any given month matches or falls just below the amount of BSQ spent, resulting in a stable or slightly deflationary supply of BSQ over time. It is not an ICO. Given the current trends, it is important to state 
explicitly that BSQ is not associated with an ICO or initial coin offering. Nor will there be any kind of crowd sale or other crowdfunding event. BSQ is a utility token being introduced into an already functioning system to make it function even better. And raising a large amount of capital upfront is neither required nor desired. Risks of launching the BISC DAO. It is one thing to design a token-based economy like the BISC DAO. It is another thing to successfully operationalize it. There are a number of risks inherent to simply going live with BSQ and the BISC DAO, including but not limited to the following. 1. Valuation risk. Token value falls too low to be viable or rises too high too quickly. Control risk. Any kind of non-meritocratic takeover of stakeholder voting power. Censorship risk. Founders are pressured before governance is fully decentralized. Credibility risk. Founder heavy initial distribution, a small team, and etc. cause doubts. Solvency risk. Trading volumes do not grow quickly enough to cover compensation. Stability risk. Implementation errors cause loss of funds or other major problems. Any of these risks could be existential. What's needed is a conservative and incremental approach to bootstrapping the BISC DAO that accounts for and mitigates these risks. In the next part, we'll see how Phase Zero plan is designed to do that. This was part one of the Phase Zero plan for bootstrapping the BISC DAO for the decentralized exchange, which is BISC. Peers, thank you for watching and see you in the next part. Bye-bye.